uh, thank you for joining us again. Um, we will, we'll be, like we said before we went on that break, we'll be talking about the um, situation of domestic violence. There, there is a report um, in a Punch newspaper um, about the woman who, on the one side, the family says, um, was beaten to death by the husband who had refused her attending uh, a function, a family function. And then on the other hand, the husband says that the um, woman uh, committed suicide. And that was the report he sent to the police who are now investigating the matter. Uh, we have joining us two uh, people to talk about this. Uh, we have Abiyye Tam George. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. We also have uh, Pamileri Adegoke. Um, it's a pleasure to have you join us, even though it's a very uh, sad story. I will start with you, Pamileri. Um, the husband says the wife took um, some sort of pesticide um, in, the, in front of their home from her shop, and um, your family is alleging that he beat her to death. Tell us as briefly as you can um, the details of what you know about the demise of your sister. Um, good morning once again. So, um, number one, they've been married for over 10 years. And I would say since they got married, she probably just enjoyed that home for one year. After one year of their marriage, one year or two years, um, the husband moved in his entire family into their matrimonial home. It, it, all started, it all started from his, moving his mother then his father, then his entire family. They have their own house not far from um, from them, but he decided to move every one of them into his matrimonial home. So since then, Abayam, his mom, has been the one controlling the house. At some point, I didn't care which is my aunt, wanted to leave the marriage a couple times. But you know, Christians, oh, I don't want to raise my kids without the, the husband. That was what kept her in that house for so long. So moving on quick, quickly, she went for her brother's name ceremony. The, it, when she wanted to go, they said, no, you can't go. This is my older brother's name ceremony. Why can't I go for, my family, for a family function? After so much argument, they allowed her to go. She, got back, she could not come back that day. She called the husband. Uh, it's late. From Mowe to Songo is, is quite a long, a long journey. I'll, I'll be back tomorrow morning. First thing, the next morning, she went back home. The mother denied her access into a matrimonial home. That is the mother of Abayomi. They had, I started arguing again. Then the next thing she called us and said, Abayomi has gone to bring out big stick. Or he's, he's run, um, he's, he wants to pick that up with stick again with a big plank. She called us and we asked her to leave. Then later she called us and oh, the valid that in. Then Normal argument that the next morning you called us and you said, I didn't care he's dead. Um, um Larry, was there was there a history of domestic violence in these 10 years? Are there, have there been other times where you uh, and other family members have had to step in um, or have seen that she had been physically abused in the last 10 years? After two years of their marriage, they've, they are, she has never had peace of mind in that marriage. Never. But has it ever been physical? prior to every time every time so why, why do you think the husband would uh, allege suicide if he actually beat her weren't there people around there um he said a biome claim he said she committed suicide listen, listen to the story he said he committed suicide in front of her first child which is a girl that she drank poison my sister posted the story on, on Facebook, and about his brother said he was there. That family was there when she drank poison. How does that make any sense? You saw her taking poison. She opened it and drank it in, in front of everyone, and you would not do anything about it. That is a very stupid story. Well, right, they need a better PR in... to help them out with this, out with this situation. Because I don't think that makes any other no sense. Okay, I let, see let's my bring wife in Abiyye now. Poison in front of our child, and I'm not saying I, 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 can't, I can't stop you. 
and you allowed out drink it, I think it's it's sweet thing to even say in the first place. That is very stupid, and I think they're All right, let, let's that. let's bring in um, Abby uh, to get her perspective on this. You've heard the account by Permilary. Um, and then the, the intriguing part um, that he's bringing up is the fact that the husband's family alleged they saw when the victim took the um, alleged um, a pesticide. Um, does this in some way conflict with the opposition that she committed suicide? Because ordinarily, if somebody wants to make an attempt in front of you, the human thing to do is to make attempts to stop them. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, there is really need to establish the fact that there are all of what we have heard are allegations, and the police will have to come in and do a pretrial investigation and interviews. These are very important to verify the allegations that have been alleged. We need to hear from the other party before we can conclude on some of the issues that are raised. So that is one thing to note. Uh, but before I go further to expand on this, it's also important that every life lost should be taken very seriously, no matter the circumstances. I say this because the Constitution guarantees the life of every human being, including dignity, the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it's clear on this. And so it is important that we should take matters of this nature very seriously. Domestic violence is commonplace around us. There is no one around us that will not give an, exam an example of what is happening in homes. We may have sisters that have passed through friends, that have passed through domestic violence. It goes from physical abuse to sexual to neglect, including emotional abuse of domestic violence cases is all around us. We may not be able to interrogate properly uh, the allegations that have been alleged by the victim's family because we haven't, you know, getting that first response, you know, discussions uh, from the offender, which is very important. So I want to believe that the police will have to do a thorough forensic in investigation on this matter, and then it will definitely get into the court system uh, for a proper procedure uh, to, to kick off in order to, to give us a full um, fact uh, to make our own conclusions. Um, Thank I mean, you. I, I, I wanted to do, I'm, I'm referencing the comments that from both parties now. These are, this particular part of the conversation is not an allegation. The family, or the husband's family says that the a woman committed suicide, right? And then this person is saying that she was, the, the family of the lady is saying she was beaten to death. Now I'm asking if the family of the husband concede that they were there when the woman took the alleged substance that led to her death, isn't there a sense of culpability here? Because if someone wants, tells you that they want to attempt to take their life, an instinct would be to stop them. Wouldn't it be the rational thing to do? Absolutely, that is very correct. At, at every time that a crime is committed, you could have conspirators, you could have accessories, you could have all kinds of parties that will co-opt or act to, to uh, establish crime. And so if there are people present at that moment when any form of uh, crime is being committed, they will be culpable. All right. Um, Bamilarian, back to you. I'm, I'm guessing there is uh, the urgent need for an autopsy to be carried out to see uh, the true cause of death here. Uh, are, are there steps yeah. that are being taken currently towards that? Um, and, you know, what yeah, exactly, yeah, and what, what exactly is the uh, mood of your family as it stands? Um, it must be really, really hurtful uh, losing a family member in, in such circumstances. Um, currently, we are, we are already doing that, and by weekend, we should not get results. And all thanks to Abayo me that um, took his wife to mortuary without telling, before telling the family uh, or before informing the family about that. 
because there's a lot of um there, there's a lot of things to be asked because how do you take your wife to the mortuary with four in family family members before your family family members that she's dead there's a lot about your to answer so, so when is we are not taking this like theater when, when is the case coming up in court is that court date um, yet? i will get confirmation today all right i'm gonna go back to um abia tam george so domestic violence unfortunately um, like you've also said, is, is something that we, we have a lot of issues with, you know, here in Nigeria. Um, these things, you know, are shocking when you see stories like this. Even since I read the story, I've, I've you know, really not been able to put one or two together um, around it. When a man brings in his family, his mother and siblings to live in a home, not very often, you know, that you find a wife very comfortable with it. What do you think we may want to change about our society and about our laws to help uh, wives and to help well-married people to be able to opt out of marriages that they uh, don't find comfortable easier? Uh, thank you. Marriage, it's, it's so personal and private and i think that two adults ultimately will choose or decide for themselves exactly how they want their marriage you know to plan out uh, they can live together including with families but it will depend on the partners and that is why for me it is important you know for the adults to be able to discuss the challenges, the prospects, you know, what the entire marriage ought to be for them. What is their focus? What is the meaning of that marriage in their life? If they are able to sit down and have a sincere discussion of how they want their marriage to look like, not one party intimidating the other or one party uh, making it look as if I'm the boss here, then the marriage may not work. But the truth of the matter is, it's difficult because of our orientation, our practices, our belief system for people who are battered in marriages, people who are abused in marriages to speak up. And a lot of things account for it, for this. All right. Well, what, when what, you tell okay. a sister or a brother or even your parents that you're suffering in your own matrimonial home, the first answer they give to you is you're not the first person and you can come out of it, put it in the hands of God. Even when it is a crime, even when it is a physical abuse on that woman, you're being advised to endure and to seek God's grace. So, so, and so, so we what, need to what would you, to what would you say needs to yeah. advise them? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just asking, what would you say needs to change from now? Because um, according to Pamilary, um, he has said, you know, that from about the second year in their marriage, she was already suffering from physical abuse. Means that that marriage maybe should have ended eight years ago. Um, so what do you think must start to change from today? To, so, of course, uh, so we can save more lives. Orientation, advocacy, education, activism. Today marks the second day of the global advocacy for a better life for women would. 16 days activism of gender-based violence. And it's all about ensuring that there is progress, there is promotion about the rights of women and the girl child. There is a clear feature, you know, for them to be able to survive and live. Today is the second day. So we need to drive this advocacy because a lot of people are in denial. A lot of women are in denial. And you know, when you get to that stage, you become very rational. Even when you're battered, you feel, some people actually feel it's law. This is terrible to believe. All but right, that just isn't true. But we need to let them understand that keeping silent, allowing that attempt, the law criminalizes even attempt to commit a crime. It is a, a crime to try to do what is wrong to someone, all right? So okay. let, let me interject quickly so we can... Sentence. 
Um, let me interject right. quickly so we can have this um, aspect of the conversation and then get the final word from Pamela uh, before we wrap things up. I want to ask you, um, you said that some people think it is love. Please clarify for us some of the signs, subtle and obvious, that something is going to lead to violence at the end of the day, that women should look out for, and men should guard themselves against um, when that temptation begins to prompt. Thank you. You see, it's a very common place. Uh, one of the very obvious signs is what has reflected in Nikkei's case, where a husband will refuse the wife from engaging in all kinds of things, even things for our own development, for our own progress, something that could make her emotionally happy. She will be denied of all of those opportunities. That is one thing to look out for. That is very common among us you know, in, in Nigeria. So we need to quickly speak up. Any woman who is going through denial of any form, intimidation, not given any kind of privacy, she's, she's a human being, first of all. She's got some kind of privacy that is protected by law, okay? Denial of adventures. These are all commonplace instances that women do face. And when women face those things, Please don't take it trivial. These are attempts for greater evil to happen. You need to speak to someone. And for the men out there, whatever you do to your spouse, to your wife, affects your children. That is one thing that I need to remind those violent and aggressive men to their wives. Right. You are damaging the future of your children. So you should not engage in any form of domestic violence. All right, let's uh, bring in Pamela. Uh, this is a conversation that you have uh, some experience with. I mean, you've lost your sister, sadly, uh, to this. What would you say to women who are in situation that they are worried about, but they want to stick around for the sake of their children? From your experience now, what would you say to them and going forward, what kind of um, assistance uh, should uh, they be getting? Uh, number one, I would say um, domestic violence or any domestic relationship doesn't deserve a second chance. It will change, it will change. No, not everyone will change. So don't give do any domestic violence relationship a second chance. The moment you see that he can slap, he raise his hand to slap you once. Trust me, he will do it again and again. They will yeah. tell you, oh, what will the word say? Let the word say whatever. That is what killed Nikkei now. Oh, I will lie. I don't want, my, I don't want to train my children without, without their father. Now, it, are the children not going to grow up without her? Right. There's a lot. Save, for you to save your, save yourself first, save your children. You can you, you don't even have to separate, but you guys don't have to live under the same roof. If you know it's not working, you leave. All right. The family um, will tell you, also, oh, uh, what will the outside world say? This, that, that. They, they, but they all have their family issues. Sort your own first. Find safety. Find happiness. Don't be in the relationship because of you don't want people to say this. You don't want people to say that. It doesn't help. It kills at the end of the day. Pablo, uh, um, once again, apologies, um, you know, that this happened um, and then your family has to go through this. Hopefully, you know, the autopsy and the investigations will be able to show what truly happened and uh, you would find some peace and some closure. Um, you're a, a, a man, a pretty popular, uh, you know, across the social media space. Yesterday, I was speaking about the importance of uh, men having better conversations amongst themselves about domestic violence, about sexual assault. Um, what do you think must also change about what men speak about um, with regards domestic violence? What do you think that you know, guys should be able to say to each other with regards to domestic violence? Because I'm sure that you, you know, might have friends, maybe have been in some circles where people have spoken about domestic violence and you know, it doesn't you know, get the reaction that you, know, you would maybe have um, liked. So what, how do you think the conversation must change among guys? 
So number one, I some guys grew up in families where by their father beats up their mother and they see it as a normal thing. So they grew up with that mentality that no, it's it's a normal thing to eat two men and to beat two men up. That oh, they are stubborn after all, I paid your fried rice. Those kind of things used to change. You actually need to understand that we are all human and we are um we are all human and we deserve love. No body deserves to be beaten. You can't, you should not even eat anybody for any for any reason. It's not proper. It's not for any reason. No matter what the person does, the highest you would do is work out at that point in time, leave that thing. Then when everything is calm, come back to it. Nobody deserves it. All right. All and right. Nobody, to... nobody. People need to have proper conversations and healthy conversations going on. All right, uh, I guess that's where we'll wrap things up. Um, it's a good place to wrap it up, actually. I want to thank you both very warmly. Um, Abie Tam George, the visionary in chief, um, Legal ATG, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And also, Pamela Adegoke, um, relative of the victim, we discussed uh, the situation today. Thank you uh, for your time and uh, condolences again. Thank you so much. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.